All right, welcome back everybody to the Home Inspection Whisper Show. We have Steve Reckner here, and Steve brought it to my attention that this is our one year of us starting him implementing things into his business, and I was like, holy cow, one year. I mean, one year, so I feel like that's like kind of a long time. You only live to like, statistically speaking, probably in our 70s, but I hope I live into my 90s, but right. like- that's actually a pretty large percentage of your life, if you really think about it. <laughs> One year. But that's pretty cool, you know. But before we get into that, I have added something new into the show, and I'm going to make sure whoever is on the show with us, they have to be having a drink of some sort. If they're if they're drinkers, of course, I'm not going to force anyone that doesn't drink. But today, mine is Houston Hayes IPA. It's a I know. Most people beat up on the IPA drinkers. Are you one of those? Do you like beat up on us because we like this grassy? I I cannot. I can't stand IPAs. I'm, <laughs> I I I can't do it at all. And my other guy Nick that works for me now, he's a he even likes the double IPAs and the oh. super hoppy stuff. Yeah. And uh, my wife and I, we just don't like them. I mean, I'm I'm more into uh, uh, Weiss beers, wheat beers. Okay. Uh, Modelo Especial. I, like. I know you got. I know you've got that down there in Houston. Yeah, Modelo's. And then I uh, we really like the German beers since we've been to Germany. And the other one I brought was a Hofbrauhaus House Oktoberfest. Okay. Oh yeah, you got to get the seasonal Oktoberfest. I so, I know yeah. there's some people out there that are so like diehard about the Oktoberfest that they literally go in and they'll buy every October beer you like those i see that beers? but i also up here and up uh towards ohio we get a little bit more of the uh christmas sales people go crazy for the christmas sales the 12 dogs of christmas and the great lakes 12 12 christmases or whatever it is i don't even know yeah. but yeah as soon as those hit the store like people line up they wait for the trucks every day it's crazy <laughs> it's fine. I've no, I, I don't know if I've actually are they like spiced beers or they like spicy? Oh, yeah, yeah, you you put like cinnamon and sugar on the rim and really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I oh. do go. I do go up to Ohio for Christmas. You do know that. I don't right. know if Harry's gonna let me go this year, which I'm pretty upset. But if they <laughs> do sell it, try to stick one in the fridge because I am gonna pay you a visit no matter what. Like when I do yeah. up there, it might be after. The winter time, I think we're going to go up there during spring break because of the whole COVID thing. I don't like talking about COVID too much, but COVID is the reason why I ended up not doing the show too much anymore because, like, it, I didn't catch COVID, but it was more of like a mental block. You know what I mean? Did you catch any of that? Well, I mean, it was definitely that about a three week law when it first happened. Yeah. And it was just like everybody went into a little funk and stepped back and was like, oh, what the hell are we doing? Like, oh, no. Yeah, And you didn't know what you're doing with your kid and going to school and, and babysitting and then people's businesses like my wife's dental office automatically got shut down. And yeah, and thank God real estate just went and just took off and just kept screaming. I agree with you, man. Like uh, real estate, I, I felt I did feel bad for all the businesses out there, you know, but like real estate just didn't stop here in Houston. I mean, no, not I, at all. Nothing in Ohio either. If no, anything, not, no, not even a little bit. As a matter of fact, we had record numbers this whole busy season. Not just us, but I mean, real yeah, estate in general. That's that's crazy. You know, I every I just, we have record low inventory. Uh, everything's going for way over asking price. It's just it's been sick. Yeah, Mary and I tried to buy an investment property. I, it's not like a crazy amount of money, but it was like the hundred around the hundred and sixty thousand dollar range, and it was nuts. Like. We put in an offer and we put in a pretty decent offer. We put in like 165, no inspection, no option period. We didn't want you to buy a home warranty. Like literally all they would have to do is sell us the house. It plus over what they wanted. There was 40 other offers on the house. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to invest this. <laughs> <laughs> so the craziest one I heard of um, up here was, a $1.2 million house. And one of my realtors uh, was kind of trying to ask me like what dates I had available and stuff so I could do this one. So, cause everything was just getting appointment times were getting eaten up so fast. I told her and she's like, okay, we're putting in for 65,000 over asking on this $1.2 million house. We'll hope to have this contract wrapped up. 
she came back and said, we didn't get the house and you're doing an inspection with my mom tomorrow. Ask her, ask her about her bid she put in. Her mom put in for a hundred, her client put in for a hundred thousand over asking, did not get the house. The mm -hmm. house ended up going because it was somebody in their brokerage. The house ended up going for 300,000 over asking, no inspections, 1.5. No inspections. No, None. Nothing. They just want to buy the house. You got, if you're that rich, I guess you can afford to fix whatever you find wrong. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. you know? <laughs> 300,000 cash, man. 300,000 cash for it to, over asking. That's I was like, cash, damn. Cash, cheers, cash. cheers to you, buddy. Hey, hey, they're doing something right. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So I was like, can't be mad at that. How are they going to recover from that? Like. There's no way that they're going to sell it for that much. Uh, I don't think they're even going to try. I mean, they just, they wanted the house. And I mean, like I said, if you're that rich, then who cares? I mean, you want to live there. You just want the house. You just want the house. And I mean, I've seen people do stuff to houses. We've done stuff to our house that doesn't, you know, it's not, we're not going to get the money back out of But So anyways, going into the show, uh, talking about business and home inspections, Reckner, a year ago, you're by yourself you're looking at trying to hire someone or you did have people on your team that weren't really team players, I would say. No. And you were doing your best to try to come up with like strategies of like how to turn these people into good employees or have structure to make them good employees, I guess, or be a good yeah. business owner. And then, and then you reached out to me one day and you were like, Hey, Chris, you know, what are you doing? And I told him about, I was like, it's actually not that hard. And you took, it was simple things. It's not like crazy. Well, dude, hard. I was sitting, I was sitting right here in this seat, right in this very spot with a beer yeah. in my hand right here. Yeah. When you said, and I quit going your phone, <laughs> I'm going to need you to get off your phone and let <laughs> ACC handle it. And I just, I just remember sitting right here and I kind of looked over here and I looked over here and I was like, shit, I, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I'm actually still having that conversation with Matt Brading. You know, like Matt, it's like, man, I'm answering my phone. Everything's fine. Everything's moving smoothly. You know, I can do everything myself. I'm like, that's not the point. You know, of course, I know you can do it all fine. But if you want to grow and own a business and not a job, right. it's two different things. And to that point, uh, I looked up one of my records with ACC. And um, I want to say during the busy season, so like, it was like, oh, I never really got slow, but let's just say over the course of the year, there was uh, somewhere around 3,000 phone calls into ACC for me. 3,000. 3,000. So, yeah. you know, I mean, some of those are going to be multiples of the same person calling back, giving more information, um, price checkers, uh, you know, people that are, you know, mistake calls, whatever. But there was 3,000 phone calls, and that's because of all the business growth. I mean, we've, I'm at, I'm at about, 850 inspections with a few more days to go. So a little bit short of that mega goal we were trying to go for, for a thousand, but we're definitely going to hit that over the, we're going to do more than that next year. I don't know if you're um, about 850 now, you can hit, you can hit a thousand by December. Uh, we, we slowed down a little bit just from a lack of marketing. So we're back on the marketing kick oh. and it's going to, it'll pick back up. Like, like you always said, it takes 30, at least 30 days to get it back up and going. So we you know with three days left in the official year of when I started with ACC, I won't hit a thousand. But if you think about how long it took to get ACC smoothed out and all that stuff and ISN smoothed out, I guess if I gave myself till the end of the year, we're going to be, we'd be close. Yeah. We were close. Well, I, I'm kind of glad you brought up like the whole smooth out process. You know, some people think that they're going to incorporate a, 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 a phone call or ACC or a, a phone service. And they think that they're going to be able to just pick it up and everything's going to be fine. But like, no, there's like a smooth out process. They have to yeah. get to you. They have to know what you can do, your tolerances. You know, it's just like hiring any employee, I would say. And, uh, uh yeah. And you just want to make sure that you hire any phone call service, which I do recommend ACC. <laughs> but if you, if you hire them, you got to realize that there's going to be at least up to 60 days of questions after the initial questions of them. Oh, they still have questions. I mean, here we are a year later and, you know, like, uh, what was it? There was one just the other day, a guy called in and all he wanted was a foundation spot inspection. Just a, one, one foundation, nothing else. It was an old house, like a, a, a century home. And 
and uh, the he was he was going to buy it with no inspections, and the appraiser came in and said, "Dude, you this basement's atrocious. You've got a problem down here. You need to get a foundation person over here." He didn't want to pay a structural engineer seven hundred bucks, so he paid me two seventy five to go over there for twenty minutes. Yeah, twenty thirty minutes up to an hour maybe of commitment to write a report. <laughs> and I and I still recommended a structural engineer. <laughs> but, uh, so he still has to go that route. But uh uh but yeah so you know they called me and were like do you do spot inspections for foundations? Like they did they weren't sure about that. I mean there's things that pop up all the time. All the time, yeah. No, I gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, there's just like a smooth out. There's gonna be bumpy things that go on and they're going to ask you questions. You still have to sit by the phone like today. I mean, I had to answer the phones like, oh, I don't know. Today is Wednesday, right? Yeah. yeah. Today was definitely one of my Mondays. Like everything that was happening today should have happened two days ago. I don't know why. <laughs> it was just like Monday. We were just getting slammed with stuff. A drone wrecked, you know, going to the bank. Oh, man, it was tough. But that was ADD kicking in. Let's get back on topic. So incorporating ACC and you've incorporated ISN because you were sending out all your emails manually. And <laughs> Everything. I, Man, I don't what? even remember what that, that life was like. I don't even come close to remember what it was like. But, I forget now. But how many years were you doing it like that? Oh, God. I, so I don't even remember when, but, uh, you know, it starts – it's such a slow build process where – um, you might be doing, you know, 40 or 50 inspections your first year and then 80, and then you might make some leap through getting known to 200 and then you're at 250 and then 300. And it just keeps growing a little bit. And then at some point you're answering your phone while you're at inspections and it starts to get unprofessional no matter how much help you have or whatever. And you're there for that client. And that was, that's what was starting to happen to me when I reached out to you because I'd be on a roof and I couldn't do a roof inspection without, at least two or three phone calls. That's, and that's, that's rough. You and know, then you and I kind of estimated it out that one time that, you know, I was spending two and a half, three months of the year on my phone time wise. Yeah. You know, no, was, you, you sat down and did all the math. Like, Oh, that's right. Yeah. You set up with ACC and you set, you sat down and you did all the math and you were like, Holy cow. Like a large percentage of my work week is just, on the phone. But now when I see that they, you know, they took over 3000 calls and, and I, I haven't had to deal with a price shopper. Um, anybody irritating me because of, you know, them saying, well, I'm just shopping for my brother when you know, it's a lie. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Like I didn't have to deal with any of that in my, in my ladies on my team and, and the guys that are on my team over there at ACC, they, now that they know you, I mean, they literally are your office. Cause I'll call in there and I know all their names. They know me. You know, it, you know, they're, they talk to you about other stuff besides business all the time. And, you know, it's, it's, it becomes, it, it really is your office. Yeah. yeah and no, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. So Michelle is on my team up at ACC and uh, she has a joke with me. It's, it's pretty funny. She's always like, she calls me and she'll talk about a certain job. It'll be like a, a three plex, you know, and it's probably like a $980 job. And then she's like, what should we do? I'm like, uh, put, you know, Josh Gibson on it and just give him all day. He'll be fine. I always end with like, he'll be fine. And then she's <laughs> always like, yeah, you're right. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they never want to pull that trigger. They'll always yeah. call you if they think they don't know the right answer. No, but They won't just make choices for you. Yeah, the joke is, is always like, he'll be fine. And then like, if anybody is not fine, they'll probably be dead or something. And then they're going to put it on their stone, tombstone. He wasn't fine. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely wasn't fine. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's nice because they just, they know, they get to know you and they know, they, they know what you're going to say about certain things. And yeah. somebody like calls and wants a two discounts instead of one discount or something like that. And my lady Tandra, you know, she calls me and she's already laughing. She's like, Steve, this client, I uh, have him on the other line. He wants to know if, uh, if you want to price match him for an extra hundred dollars off. And I'm like, Nope, tell him to go fly a kite. Thanks. Bye. And she just starts laughing. So, you know, it's nice. Cause it's not like you don't, you don't get to know these people. Yeah. So before your work day, you said you were working into like 10 o'clock at night. So. Oh yeah. Oh, Oh no. 10, 11, sometimes 12. Yeah. Uh, and I would start at, and I know one of my buddy up here, one of my home inspection buddies up this way, 
Uh, big shout out in case he's listening to Ryan from Pro Precise Home Inspections. I know he gets up sometimes at four or five in the morning and is writing his reports um, and doing stuff. And I, I just like, dude, you've got to learn to do it all on site. He's like, I'm, I'm working, I'm working it, I'm working it. He's, he's, he's trying. But uh, five in the morning, I, oh yeah, I don't even get out of bed till like eight. <laughs> I know, I, and but, but, I, but to Ryan's point, I used to do the same thing. I would like leave my pest oh. inspections and some other things I needed to write up until the next day. Stuff, and you just feel horrible that you got to get this thing done, or you promised the client it would be out quicker. And, uh, and I wasn't doing that. So like today, you know, I turned around and told the guy at the inspection, like, Hey, we'll, you know, we'll have this out to you in the next 30 minutes, you know? So as soon as we get back to the truck, we'll have it, you know, before we get back to the office, it'll be done in your email. Yeah. So with that being said, so you incorporated ACC and ISN into your business. Yeah. And so what, when you get home at the end of the day, most of the time, what, what time would that be, would you say? 4.30, I'd say, is usually a good... Yeah, so when you're home, are you done with work? Are, are Every you... once in a while, uh, I have to write a pest inspection. But sometimes I still do them in the morning, but it's at 8. It's yeah. at 8.15 now. It's not 5 o'clock in the morning. But the most of the time, is... I get home, and I, I can knock out a pest report in 5 minutes. So... Oh. Uh, yeah. Most of the time, I'll get home and just knock that out like I did today and send it, put it in ISN and send it out. Um, and that's only if, you know, the other people aren't available to do it. Right. No, that. Because now I've got peoples. Yeah. Multiple yeah, so peoples. We'll, we'll hit that in a second. So when it, ultimately you get to come home before you didn't get to hang out with your kid at all, you barely got to eat dinner and you were working all night. Now you get to come home and be like, all right, well, I can maybe knock out this pest inspection later in the evening. And you get to have dinner and hang out with your kid all day. Well, I mean, I take off my boots. I write a five-minute pest inspection, and I've got the rest of the night off. Yeah, that, that's huge. I you mean, it's, it's usually 4.35 o'clock. I mean, it's gotten to the point now where he's text messaging me from my wife's phone because he's because of COVID. He's at her office doing his schoolwork on computer. Um, I'm getting text messages from him around 3, 3.30. Daddy, when are you picking me up? When are you picking me up? Because he <laughs> knows it's going to be long before five now. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm get sometimes I'll get there at three forty-five. I mean, it just depends on how fast we banged out the second one. Man, that's awesome, dude. That's I, I can't tell you like honestly that that gives me goosebumps. Like, that's yeah, cool. that's it, it, it's one of the best parts. But it's just it's amazing how much you know that what we set up is doing for me. Yeah. Because and, and then when you see what you pay for it. Yeah, I mean, you're paying another. You're you're paying an employee. Yes, but it's once a month, not once a week type pricing. But the thing I, is, no. I can't. I couldn't pay a real person that. Well, it you might be able to. I know some people that do, oh, God, but it, no. it it would be tight, and you'd have to find the exact right person. But the thing is, it's about work life balance, right? Well, that too, because if you hire somebody at that price, okay, a a person, right? So one person, okay, what if she wants to get pregnant, have a baby? Now what are you doing? I don't have health insurance for her. Um, you know, you get pregnant, she's gone. She's not going to be back answering the phones or whatever. Or now she has a baby to take care of. Uh, what if somebody gets sick? Okay, now that employee's not there answering the phone that day. Yeah. Um, what if that person just decides to up and quit? And then all that training you put in and time and effort and all that stuff. If somebody quits at ACC, I don't even know about it. Yeah, I've got a I got a full team no matter what. That's Paul's problem. <laughs> so, I mean, they just keep answering the phone and smiling and doing their job. Yeah, I don't hear a thing. And honestly, they have such a like an intensive recruiting strategy. They told me about that. It's like it's pretty intense. So it's it's not a joke. So like by the time that person gets to the point where they answer your phone, it's not just like someone they hire be like, hey, we need you to answer the phone. They're like, hey you know, they're professional. They know all the questions, majority of the questions that are going to be asked. And if they don't know the answer, the person next to them, literally right next to them that will know the answer. That's, that's pretty awesome, man. You know, I can't, I can't get over like how that's changed your life. Honestly, like even talking to you, you even seem happier. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this mess I made behind me in my wood shop, dude. Yeah. I haven't been able to do that in years. Yeah, I, I, I'm making epoxy river tables. I'm having fun doing all kinds of stuff with woodworking again, making yeah. money at it. Yeah, 
that was actually kind of one I want something I wanted to brag out about. Look at my office; it's all like clean and organized nice. today. And I was like, but before both of our offices were all a mess, and there was like boxes piled up on each other. So I got you beat. Yeah. yeah, I actually had to build this because I got into the stucco industry. I did want to talk about that a little bit. Stucco inspection. Yeah. You know, my father was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's easy. You just drill into stucco." It's not. <laughs> There's nothing that's ever. <laughs> why do I always? I, anytime I start something new, I always, always think it's going to be easy. I'm like, yeah, it's easy. I'll just build a report. You don't just build a report like that. Mm-mm. Like redesign it for your area because my stucco inspection reports are going to look different than your inspection reports because what your stucco contractors expect are going to be different than what my stucco contractors. Because he gave me, he gave me like his base template, and then I built off of that. And then someone called me like a complete idiot, and I'm like, "Oh no!" And so then I had to like do all this research and rebuild it with uh, one of our employees, uh, our our lead inspector, Josh Gibson. He, like he he helped us build this, and it was it was really nice. It came out came out really nice, but. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things we're starting to work on now that we've, we've kind of broken into that point where everybody's trained, everybody's flowing, everybody pretty much knows what they're doing. And I can start, you know, focusing on other things. And like, one of the things is we need to, I saw a couple things with, I do Home Inspector Pro, and I saw some stuff on, on, on the, the Home Inspector Pro Facebook page, where somebody had had a bunch of stuff laid out when it was, uh, it said like things that were home maintenance items versus serious items versus, and they had them in these little categories. I was like, how did you do that? So I, I'm in the process now of trying to revamp my reports a little bit to make them better and easier to understand. But what's awesome about that is you have the time. To right. Do- I, that's what I'm saying. Like I've got the time. I've got the ability now. Yeah, right. um, like e- emails too, though. You know, ISN is a big part of the ACC thing. And some people try to do parts of it, but don't do the ISN. They don't, they don't go full in. And uh, some people just they handle their own emails, their own pre-inspection agreements and all that kind of stuff and try to track payments and all that stuff and who has signed and who hasn't. What a pain in the took us. Now I just turn on the computer, ISN pops up, all the inspections are just laid out in front of me. And, you know, during the busy season, we were pumping, I want to say 25, 30 a week. So, I mean, you see all those on the page and you just you can automatically see who has signed, who hasn't. You just click a button, it'll send it out again to annoy them and make them sign and pay. And so, you just you don't have to do anything. Um, Why well, I got you here, and we talked about automating everything, and then how it was before. You had you know someone that you know really two people that really weren't team players, and now you have a bunch of team players. Like you've got your interview process down. You you found out uh, you found you know good people to work for you. Um, how many people do you got working for you now? Four. Four. So you have one five full- counting me. Yeah. So one full time inspector, and then two. And so is he fully trained? I thought your last time I got on the phone, no. he's yeah. loose. We yeah. cut him loose. So you have two full time inspectors. Then you have two other employees that help you pick up radon and insist on the inspections. Right. Yep. 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 You know. At the same time, I'm jealous that we don't have radon here because it sounds like a really great service to add on your business if you're. Oh, you have work. radon. It's just at what level? Now I'm gonna talk yeah. to you like one of my oh. clients. Okay, so there is radon here, but there's not like deadly radon here. Oh uh, yes, every, all radon's deadly, Chris. You're you're marketing it wrong. <laughs> you want me to start marketing radon here? <laughs> yeah. In the, in the so I had the, I, I, when we were at the uh, um, Ashy conference. Um, in New Orleans, there was a guy who, uh, who called me, I'm going to say it was James from, from Texas. Yeah. And, uh, we had a, a big old conversation about radon and he implemented it. He's doing it. In Texas? Is yeah. He, is he on, is he like up in the panhandle? Where's he at in Texas? I don't know. So, okay. <laughs> I thought he was, I thought he was closer to you. All right. Let me explain something to you real quick. There's not <laughs> just Texas. Okay. There's like five regions of Texas. I know. I lived in Oklahoma for a while, remember? <laughs> but people sometimes are like, yeah, he's in Texas, you know. He he does radon. Be like, I just drove, I just went on vacation. I uh, and I went west Texas, which I've never been. That is literally like there's still like a third world country out there. I'm it's telling Mexico. you. 
<laughs> it's Mexico. It is yeah. Mexico. I thought you were in Mexico, actually, when I was looking at your stuff on Facebook. I was like, he's in Mexico. Look, there's an empty Prada, a Prada uh, booth he's at. No, this is actually really funny. So, like, we were camping for five days straight, right? And in this five days straight of camping, I it was day three, and Mary and I didn't pack, like, really good food. We packed food, but it was just camp food that – you know, prepackaged that we didn't really know what we we're getting into. It got to like day three and I'm like, no, I have to have a burger, right? <laughs> the closest burger was 46 minutes away. And I'm like, well, we, hit, finished our, we finished our hike today. We came back. It was in the middle of the day. It was like three o'clock. It was hot because it's, we're out in the desert, right? So I'm like, you know what? Let's hop in the car. We're going to go get this burger. Drove all the way over there. Literally no one in the store, no AC, the old the guy is the the waiter, the cash register person, and the cook. He's the it's the whole thing, and he and after a while, those people like to talk because there's no customers, right? So while he was talking to me, he told me this story that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually I could be in danger right now, and it doesn't. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, man, out in the middle of nowhere, like we you are out in the middle of nowhere. There's a guy out here that literally lives in a hole. He lives in a hole in the ground and he has chickens in the hole with him. And he just constantly builds out this maze of a hole. Well, one day he ordered a, a baby carriage and all their mail doesn't get delivered to them because they're so far out in the middle of nowhere. It goes to a central spot, which is his store. And he showed up to pick up the baby carriage. He's like, Hey man, you, I know where you live. Why do you have a baby carriage? He was wondering if you had a baby. He's like, he's like, well, I just started getting on all these dating apps and I wanted to have the baby room <laughs> ready for that thing. And the guy's like, I don't even know what to say to that. Like he's, <laughs> he's not even dating yet. And he already has a nursery set up in the hole in the ground. He was like, I'm going to see someone get out off of a bus to meet this dude because he's not bad looking and he's going to end up adopting her like the show on TV. I forget what it's called, but there's a show on TV where it's about this girl that lived in a hole in the ground and she is really weird. <laughs> but, wow. I, but I don't know how I went on that tan tangent, but I'm just saying, yeah, West Tech, there's going back to the beginning. You're not in one area of Texas. Texas is like should be divided up in like five different states, I think. You were saying you got into stucco heavy. I mean, we got into the sewer scoping heavy. Oh, yeah, you did. I, right. I bought, you bought the sewer scope camera from me. And Two of them. How's that working for you? Uh, fantastic. Um, uh, it, my one guy, Eric, I mean, that's kind of been his thing. Like if they don't order it over the phone, he really gets them at the home inspection with the only thing we can't see today, you know, when we're they're going over everything at the end is this line underground, you know, and for 125 bucks today, I can tell you what's going on under there. But so like if they're on site, you sell it for 125, mm -hmm. just extra. So yep. have you compared that pricing to other plumbers in the area? Nope. I could, I think you can get them for more. I'm just throwing it out there. Probably. But if you've already got them for 450, to 570 to 600 to 700 bucks 125 while we're on site i'm good oh i mean yeah I, i've checked it with other we there's only a handful mm -hmm. uh maybe two or three other home inspectors that have sewer scope and they and they kind of have their around the same ballpark yeah yeah I mean, yeah so you know we're all pretty close in the ballpark and i completely agree with you when it comes to like gouging too you're like well I've already got them here for 500, you know, like I have the tools in my truck. I don't have to make another sell another trip. You know, but if we have, to, if we do leave and then they decide they want it, it's 250. Double. Think, yeah. 250 is a, a good price. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, if you want us to come back out and that's happened, um, there was, there, they wouldn't let us stay at a house after the third hour, even mm -hmm. though we were done before that, they, they said no to, because uh, it wasn't in the original contract, and so we had to wait till they owned the house. And you know, there's, there's just things. Yeah. That sometimes we don't get it done. Yeah, but so it's it's actually been a pretty hefty profit margin for you. Oh yeah. I need yeah. I mean, I started seeing average ticket prices. 
that's the other thing that went way up as average ticket prices. Yeah. Um, Stuck obviously, we were going to set a record for money this year because we were setting a record for inspections. But, um, you know, the average, I mean, I remember my average price, I used to think it was right around four twenty-five, mm -hmm. And I'd say most people would say that's pretty darn good um, on average. And then take that out times, you know, 850 inspections. We're doing great. Um, go back. And I'd say my average price this year is closer to 700 Whoa. With so, radon and sewer scope. Like, remember how we talked about ACC, uh, you know, and I was okay. afraid of them not selling radon and sewer scopes and pest inspections as good as me. And you're like, dude, that's all they do. Just let it go. Yeah. And uh, like, <laughs> trust me, they will sell it. You will see that you will see it go up. They will pay for themselves in add-ons. Yeah. And, uh, and it's true. Um, you know, cause I see a ton of our inspections or that do have add-ons. Do that. That's crazy. So, I mean, yeah. the worst phone calls I received throughout any year is when they call you and say, my sewers backed up into my, into my basement. You're an asshole. I, you missed this. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It says twice in your report that I wanted you to have that checked out. Cause it's the only thing we can't see underground. So now I'm able to say, we offered you sewer scoping. You turned that down. You didn't want to do the service. So I'm sorry you're having a problem. Um, you know, but so I either make money off of it or I've totally covered myself liability wise. And I don't have, I don't have that issue anymore. Man, that is kind of, I do, that's happened to us where they know that we can't see behind it, but you, they, that there's that slight uh, concern where it's just like, what, what could have they done? You know, like, and well, one of the things we do is we also reiterate it. Um, you know, that they were offered it when they, we, we talk, this is what we're saying on site. You know, we, you were offered it when you booked your inspection, we can add it on today right now. If you want, we don't care either way, whether you do it or not, but just be aware we can't see in this pipe. We don't know what's going on there. There's a new sewer cap on there. Obviously somebody has been messing around in there in the last couple of years or recently. Yeah. Um, so something could be a, an issue that they know about that they didn't disclose. There's a giant trees growing in your front yard right down the middle. I mean, that's always a, a good candidate for sewer scoping. Yeah. I've even done it where uh, I had a guy that was, I mean, there was a huge tree, little teeny front yard, but one of the biggest trees I've ever seen. And I could see root <laughs> intrusion on that driveway, that driveway in the city street. Uh, that's definitely in there. It's in there. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't want it. He didn't want to pay for it. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do you a huge favor. I said, I'm going to do the sewer scope anyway, and I'm going to do it if I find major root intrusion or a broken pipe or something that's going to save you ten or $15,000, you owe me 150 bucks. And if I find nothing and you're right, then you just got a free sewer scoping. What do you say? And he said, yep, okay, sounds good. So oh. I did it, man. Major, uh, major broken pipe. No, you know what? I, I got to say that is probably one of the best business calls out there. You know, it's just like, you played it, you gambled, but you're like, you're not really gambling. No, it me, it, it, this was a PVC <laughs> pipe. They had put in, it wasn't even cast iron. It was right behind the toilet in the bathroom and the, on, on a house that didn't even have a basement. It was a slab. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was two seconds to get into it, five minutes to grab the camera out of the truck, and I didn't get 30 feet, and boom, there it was. Humongous broken root intrusion. That's awesome. That is pretty cool. All right. So you kind of motivated me a little bit. I'm not, my, I might not sell you the camera yet. <laughs> not yet. No, yeah. No, not yet. Uh, but there is a third party service. I thought about third partying it out because Texas, we have so much regulation out here that it's so gray between when a plumber should be doing it and when you should be doing it. And I'm like, you know what? There is this plumber that's getting into it that I, um, that I might talk to, but I, I am definitely going to give him a call. So the camera still might be there for you. So not only have you automated all everything and you get yeah. to hang out in with your family at the end of the day, you also and do, and do woodworking and do oh, whatever, go, go hunting. I've been hunting. I've, I've taken after the super hunting. busy season, after the yeah. super busy season, I have uh, taken off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, since the end of September until the first of the year. Yeah. So I'm taking off, I'm having three day weekends every weekend. 
uh, for almost three months and couldn't be happier. Like, the, and, and I know everything's covered. They're, they're booking inspections. Uh, the, the one guy that I just cut loose just got his first online order today. He was freaking out and happy as could be. And, uh, you know, we're doing it. So that's awesome. All right. So we're getting close to the end of the podcast here. It's already close to an hour already. I, I don't even know how that happened. We're just doing oh, that. We could do, we could do three hours. <laughs> yeah. If people would listen to three hours. I want to end with, I kind of want to give you a challenge because I'm part of the challenge too. I haven't finished the book yet. Um, but I've been, I've been reading this book called Profit First. And whenever you first met me, you still probably thought like, man, that I want to tackle the world, right? I want to do, I want to be in control of almost every home inspection in America. Like, but now I've been reading this book and it kind of brought realization to me and it's okay. And he's talking about like owning a small business from what I understand right now, but having a very profitable small business is actually better than having a really large business. And, oh, yeah. and so I would, and people are like, well, profit's not everything. Well, yes, you are right. We want our employees to be healthy, well-fed, insured, you know, happy. taken care of, happy. But at the same time, the lifeblood of a business is profit, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so- it's, it's, not a, it's not a dirty word and we have to have it because our liability is high. Our training is, is, is long and intense. Um, if you, if you, don't want to get those phone calls because yeah. uh, I hate getting phone calls and callbacks. It's it, it, it drives me insane. So every time I get one, I change my report somehow so it can never happen again. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's just it's definitely it's it, it's important to make money when yeah. you're when you're doing this. And that's essentially why we all start our own business, right? We want right. to make money. So yeah. So listening to him speak, I was like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. You know, and he has an untraditional way of accounting. And it's talking about, from my understanding so far, I'm not even done with the book yet. I need to finish it. But you open up five separate bank accounts and each bank account has a purpose. You have an income bank account. You have an expense bank account. You have a tax bank account. You have a profit bank account. And there's one more. I need to look it up. Like I said, I'm just getting into it. Profit now, right? Yeah, it's a profit first. Profit first. Okay. Yeah, it's called Profit First. And I recommend just starting it and l- listen to it. Uh, I, can, I think I can send it free to you off of my phone if you like. I'll send it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And course. do it. And I'm trying to just get the people around me to like do it at the same time. And it's about, I don't know about you, but like for the longest time, whenever I've been doing home inspections, I've always just been like, well, I'm spending less than I'm making. So I'm okay. You know, like that's, that's, yeah. kind of- I mean, you can live that way. That's fine. But when you start to get bigger, when you're doing what you're doing, it gets, if you don't have ACC and ISN and multiple people doing the, the right kind of work and the jobs and making it profitable, it's not worth the, the headache. Yeah. It's I mean, if, if you're not making money, it's not worth the headache. So, you know, there's been a lot of people uh, that have that that have talked to me about ACC and, and, and ISN since since last year, over the course of this year. I mean, you saw it. We had a bunch of people come up to us at ASHI and stuff, um, wanting to know if this was set up or made up and fake and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. And, and it's like, no, no, it's not. And then they're like, well, how can you afford ACC? I don't get it. And I'm like, dude, you, <laughs> it's, once you do it and once you dive in, look, I, I'm going to more than double my business because they're answering my phones because I let go because I took the leap because I did it. And they're like, well, how can you afford to pay them? And it's like, I couldn't afford to live without them at that price now. Yeah. The, what he charges is not wrong. Yeah. So I think it's a know, fair price. Like what he's it's at. super fair price. And people are always like, well, what is it? What is it? And it's like, it's different for everybody because it's a different amount of inspections that you, you book with them and stuff and you can get switched out when you get busier with them and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it might only be three of my inspections for the month out of 80. <laughs> <laughs> so three yeah. out of 80 pays for them. The other 77 are mine. So yeah. it, that, you know, that's crazy. So it's, it, they're, they're so worth it. And it's given me a completely different prospect on life and business. Yeah. So 
I recommend just starting the book and then you and I can talk about it uh, next go around because it, it really like he's kind of morphing the way I think about business because before I was listening to Gary Vee and Grant Cardone and it was like times 10, do times 10 of everything. And Gary, I still like Gary V because he, the social media aspect, I don't think what he teaches is wrong, but like Grant Cardone, you're just like, well, he's just talking about bigger is better. And then this guy's talking about like, well, bigger is not always better. And then you're right. like, well, well, maybe you're right. You know, like I have a healthy lifestyle. I'm making okay money. Why do I need the Lambos? You know what I mean? And so it's just like, um, it was just something that kind of spoke to me. So I kind of wanted to give you that challenge at the end of the show. Just be like, all right, well. I'm on it. I'll have yeah. it downloaded before I, you know, before I get back in the house. Nice. <laughs> no, that, that's awesome. Before we leave, you want to tell everybody how to find you. Oh, God. You should have told me to write these things down. <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot. Oh, God. Um, well, let's start off with uh, Steve Rector. You can find him on, actually, in our Home Inspection Whisperer group. You can look right. him up from there, and then you can follow You can find my, my Facebook page, Steve Rector. You can, you can find my business page, Rector, Rector Home Inspections. Um, TikTok and all that stuff or Instagram, all those different other things is usually just wrecking our home inspections. I, we're just getting busy on that kind of stuff. So there's not much there, but I've got some followers on Instagram now and stuff and, and starting to do the story more on Facebook. That's what blew my mind. I, I wasn't doing stories at all. The all right. stories, I mean, I'll do, I'll do a post and sometimes I only get like 150. Some people look at it. Maybe a video will get five or 600 views or something like that. Um, I love my local realtors and stuff and some of the people that follow me. Uh, but the stories, people yeah. click on those and watch those short little stories for a few seconds. I'll get like 700 views on a stupid story. The stories is where it's at. Like, so if there was one gem for today, folks, do those little Facebook stories. That's what I kind of like. I, I tr I'm going to do my best to stop doing the phone call before. I'm just going to say, hey, you need to do this. And then all the gold nuggets come out just through our conversations. You and I, oh, yeah. sometimes. Well, we and, and you and I couldn't possibly write down all the little gems that popped up throughout the year. I mean, we, <clears throat> I wouldn't say we talk every week, but it's definitely a couple times a month. Oh yeah. We, we definitely, I mean, yeah, just any questions. I mean like, random. yeah. All right, yeah cool. And that's also happening with a bunch of people, you know, I'm starting to get, you know, there's a lot of people that call now and, and ask questions and just want to know things. And some of them are home inspection related, like, Hey, what are you doing for this? Or how did you handle this? Or they'll send me a photo and say, dude, check this out. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So we're going to end it there. Uh, that's Steve Reckner. He's out of Ohio. So if you do, which I know that Ohio is big too, which area? Uh, Northeast, Ohio? Northeast Ohio. Oh. So Northeast Akron, Ohio. Yeah, northeast. Yeah, need, northeast corner. We got that covered. If you need a home inspector. Yeah, northeast <laughs> Ohio. Uh, he'll take care of you. But also, like, you know, reach out to either one of us if you have any questions about home inspections. We're welcome to help you. And um, if you want to find out more about Home Inspection Whisper, please um, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And then also go to our Facebook group where we share business ideas. It's all, it's a business podcast. Yeah. And if anybody wants to reach me, um, you can go to my website, Reckner home and, uh, you can send me a message on there or, uh, once we get to know each other, you can have my cell phone number. So whatever <laughs> they have to know, cause I don't use it that much anymore. <laughs> all right. Thanks guys. And uh, catch us on the next one and talk to you later. Bye.